Hi, I'm Rich Lund. Welcome to my classroom. And what I have behind me here is my attempt to reproduce the Cavendish experiment. For my setup, what I have are two meter sticks which have been taped together. And on either end of these two meter sticks, held there with some paper clips, are two one kilogram masses on each end. Now this meter stick is being hung by a copper wire which runs all the way up to the top of this very large piece of wood which I have separated out and have supported up on lab tables with some physical science and AP chemistry textbooks. I'm here on a Sunday and I've let this hang here since Friday when I left the building. In trying to do some preliminary testings during the week that I set this up, I found that this experiment was going to have to happen on a weekend. During a school day, and even after students have left, there's so many people opening and closing doors in the building and moving through the hallways that plenty of air currents are produced. And this experiment is quite sensitive to air currents. Another physics teacher, Andrew Bennett, has put together some very good Cavendish experiments on video. I'm in fact inspired by him and wanted to retest the same idea out in my classroom. We can talk about gravity in many contexts of just falling objects, but also what about an actual demonstration that can show students, yes, all objects that have mass do have a gravitational attraction to each other, even though it might be incredibly weak. The Cavendish experiment should be able to produce those results. And so for the masses, Andrew Bennett, he used some bowling balls. I have access though to these. This is a lead brick. And I'll be massing this in a little bit here so you can see just how heavy we're talking about. But uh, 25, 30 pounds, somewhere around there, I'm, I'm just guessing. Mm. Where did this guy get some lead bricks? Well, I know a guy who knows a guy. You know what I'm saying? Actually, um, I know people who work at the MSU Cyclotron, and I was able to get these on loan. And so I wanted to make my own video, not trying to steal any thunder from Andrew Bennett, I think his are excellent, but since I knew I had access to some lead bricks, I wanted to try out this experiment with something that is even more dense than bowling ball material. Before we do that though, let's mass these bricks and show you how heavy they are. I turned off and on the scale so that way now it is re-zeroed out, so it's not even registering the mass of these plastic bags. It's Put a lead brick in. Oh. Okay, and it's holding. And we're at about 12.03 kilograms. Yeah. Get a workout doing this. But it also, when it comes to the Cavendish experiment, it's not just about how much mass you use, it's also about how much volume it's taking up. If you had something really large and massive, like a car, well, that also takes up a whole lot of volume. And when it comes to gravitational effects, it's not just about the mass, it's also about the distance squared between the two objects. So yes, you want something very massive, but you also want it to take up not too much space, so that way you can get the hanging masses over there on the Cavendish experiment, to be able to get close to the center of mass of your objects. Lead is a pretty good option. Um, gold bricks of this size, I don't quite have the budget for that. Without further ado, the Cavendish experiment. Here's the experiment in its entirety. And we're doing it from two angles. The downward angle and, of course, the side angle. The clocks were not 100% synchronized for these two shots. They were just placed in there to show the passage of time. However, uh, it appears that the digital clock looks about 20 seconds faster than the analog clock. And so what we're doing now is just getting some footage of the torsion balance and how much it's already moving. Just what the noise of the experiment is. How much is it already rotating clockwise and counterclockwise?
And in just a little bit, we will be placing in the lead bricks. And now the lead bricks are placed in. First one, then the other. And now we'll sit back and see if we get any effect. Now, did we see an effect there or not? Well, gravity is a very, very weak force. It's the weakest force that we know of. So to really be able to see a more noticeable effect, let's watch the same experiment, this time from the two angles separately, but at 30 times the speed. Here again is just footage establishing how much noise was already in the experiment. Lead bricks are placed in. Now again, 30 times the speed. Here's the same experiment from the side angle shot. Lead bricks are placed in. Uh, 
and let's see the experiment one more time from both of those angles, this time at 50 times the speed. So how'd we do? Well, take a look at the results. In getting the first preliminary motion of our torsion balance, we can see how far counterclockwise and how far clockwise it was normally moving. You can say that this is the amplitude of the noise in our experiment. Now, I placed the lead bricks, and did I place them within that amplitude? Yes, I did. I wanted to get it close to where the masses were, so that way we could get a pronounced effect, and I think we did. But what about the argument that, well, hey, that was just in the direction it was going to move anyway eventually, and isn't, aren't the lead bricks just stopping its movement of the naturally reaching that amplitude? That's a valid question. But also, we have evidence in this footage very much that that's not at all the case. You can notice that the amplitude of the torsion balance, its maximum amplitude in the counterclockwise direction is seen here at the start of the footage. Then it reaches the clockwise maximum amplitude of the noise. And then on its way back, that's when I'm placing the lead bricks into position. And as soon as those are in position, the torsion balance never reaches the counterclockwise maximum position of its amplitude. Not even close. As soon as the lead bricks are placed into position, the torsion balance moving already away from them appears to be slowing down pretty dramatically and then changing direction much earlier than it normally would in its normal degree of rotation. This acceleration, the deacceleration in one direction and then accelerating into the other direction was a constant acceleration in the direction of the lead bricks. That constant acceleration was the gravitational force of the lead bricks on those two hanging masses on each side. The Cavendish experiment. Not a quantitative measurement of big G, that's not what we were attempting here, but is this a qualitative visual demonstration that gravity exists between all objects, a very weak force, yet still one that we can detect even here in the classroom setting? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. See you next time.